Let me zoom in on that. So sorry I wrote this so poorly, but we're starting first with two step equations that have fractions. And this is getting to where I talked to you last week about I'm not a fan of fractions. If I don't have to work with fractions, I would prefer not to. When I look at this problem, even though it is fractions, we don't need to work with fractions on this. We want to look for what the denominators have in common and multiply by the least common multiple. And that would be 8. Because 4 counts up with 4, 8, 12, 16, etc., etc., right? What does 8 count up with? 8, 16. Both of them have 8 as the first one that they both have in common. We're not looking for factors of these when we're trying to clear the denominators. We're looking for the least common multiple. Okay, so if you want to write that on the side, least common multiple is 8. And I'm going to multiply both sides by that 8. And because I'm doing it with fractions, I'm going to make my denominator visible. The whole number 8's denominator is 1. Who's with me so far? Why am I using the 8? It's not the reciprocal, it's the least common multiple of 8 and 4. What do you mean, Athena? Oh, between them. Yeah. So, it is the reciprocal of this very first one, though, isn't it? Because this was 1 over 8 is 8 over 1, right? So this becomes just y. We have to use distributive property because there's two fractions here on this side of the equation. What is 8 times 3? Divided by 4. So I'm going to subtract 6 because the minus sign comes down with it. Do you guys see what I just did there? And then 8 times 5 divided by 4. There is a different way. What's the other way you did it, John? Did you keep the fractions and just do the work? Yeah. I'll just kind of box this off so we can see that your way works as well. Remember, my caveat is I don't like working with fractions, so if I can avoid them, I do. So I'm going to show you this way. It is not the only way. Your way works as well. So let's go back and start it the way the book is actually showing, which if you're comfortable with fractions and they don't bother you, use them. The problem with this is they don't have a common denominator, do they? And when I'm adding and subtracting fractions, I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to change both of these fractions to have a denominator of 8. Is that what you did? Okay, and I'm just going to write it underneath here. y over 8 minus, what would this fraction be if I change the denominator to 8? 6 over 8. Is equal to? 10 over Am I on the right track? Is this what you're seeing on your paper, John? Yeah, and then I'm going to add 6 over 8 to both sides. And I get y over 8 is equal to 16 over 8. Mm -hmm. And now I need to multiply both sides by 8 over 1. Because I need, this is, the 8 is still a denominator with the y and we want the y to be by itself. This cancels and gives us y equals 16. Both work. The reality is I did the last step here first. Do you guys see that? We still did the 8 over 1. We still had to add this to both sides. It's the same steps. I just looked for what was easiest for me. It may not be what's easiest for you. Okay? Do both methods make sense? Yeah. Okay. 
That's going to get to your question about number seven when we go back to doing the work. Um, let's do one more with a fraction. We're going to try 2x over 5 minus 1 half is equal to 5. What do you guys want to do? Clear the frac the denominators or work with the fractions? I think probably that's the best thing to do because I know you guys have added and subtracted fractions before. What is the least common multiple of 5 and 2? So I'm going to multiply by 10 over 1. 10 times 2? 20. Divided by 5? 4. So we have 4x minus 10 over 2, 5, equals 50. Going to add 5 to both sides. 4x equals 55. And with all of that work we did at the very beginning to get rid of a denominator, our answer is going to be a fraction. Because does 55 get divided evenly by 4? No. Here's the lovely thing about algebra. This is the answer. You don't have to make a mixed number with it. I haven't taught elementary school in a really, really long time. I, I don't know why they teach you all of those things about fractions that confuse you guys. I wish they wouldn't, but they probably have their reasons. Okay, who feels like they're not solo on this, but they have enough that they could go practice some of these? Okay, good. Let's try now, and I think I'm going to have you turn back, and let's do this on page 10. We're going to try simplifying before solving. Six X plus three, oops, I wrote it wrong and this is why I should use pencil up here. Six X plus three minus eight X equals 13. Okay, I don't use pencil up here because it doesn't show up as well, but you guys can see that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, what do you see that's like 6x and? 8x. So we want to combine like terms, and these two are like terms, yes? Yes. What is 6x? I could move them and be next to each other. Like, we could rewrite this as 6x minus 8x plus 3 equals 13. Or you could just look at them and do the math. But be careful with that, because we have a positive and a negative, and this is going to end up being negative, negative because negative 8 is further from 0 than 6, right? So what do we get? Negative 2x plus 3 equals 13. Do you see what we mean about simplified before we start, we start solving? Yeah. That's typically combining like terms. What's my next step? Minus 3 on both sides. Yep, minus 3 on both sides. Negative 2x is equal to 10. What are we going to divide by? Negative 2. And our solution? x is equal to? Negative 5. Negative 5. That is probably the biggest mistake that happens in some of these. You guys can see it ahead, like you can see a step ahead about what's happening, but you forget to keep the negatives with them. So just be really careful about those. <clears throat> okay, I want to try this one because it's a kind of problem that I get a lot of questions about because it has an invisible that has to be made visible to make it work right. Nine equals six minus parentheses x plus two. My very first step on this is distributive property. Do you guys see where it is? What does this minus mean is in front of this? A negative, a negative invisible 
one. And because it's there, that means it has to be multiplied by both things in the parentheses. If there was a plus there, it wouldn't change anything because positive one times these would be the same thing. But when we have a negative in front of it, a negative one changes the sign of what's inside, true? Yeah. So let's rewrite this. Nine equals six minus x minus two. Negative one times positive x gives us a negative 1x, we tend to leave that negative 1 invisible. If making it visible helps you see it, write it in there. It's there. It's just like Harry Potter's invisibility cloak is all over our ones, right? Okay. <clears throat> Why is this negative 2? Negative 1 times positive 2 is... What are my like terms now? 6... So 9 is equal to 4 minus x. That negative 1 is going to keep bugging us because it's going to be the last thing we have to deal with. What am I going to do next? Subtract 4. I get 5 is equal to negative x. What's really there? Because that negative is there, the x is not isolated, even though it looks like it's alone there, but it's not. What does it have with it? When we say x's or variables are isolated, we mean that they're there with just a positive invisible one. If we've got a negative, it's not done yet. Negative 5 equals x. You guys want me to check that one? We haven't been checking our work. Let's go back. 9 equals 6 minus negative 5 plus 2. First thing we have to do is distribute again. And what are we going to distribute here? Negative 1. Negative 1, negative one times negative 5 is 5. Negative 1 times 2? Negative 2. 6 equals 9. I just brought down the other numbers that I haven't touched yet. Did you guys see what I did there? Yeah. I just dropped them down to the next line. Now, all that's here is addition and subtraction. So on the right side of the equation, we can just work from left to right. What's 6 plus 5? 11. What's 11 minus 2? 9. 9 equals 9. That's proof that negative 5 is equal to x for this problem. I'm seeing some people looking a little confused, and that's why I chose this one. Yeah? So, um, way back in the beginning when you did the distributive property, why didn't we bring down the addition sign between x and Oh, it's another invisible. I could have rewritten this line. Do you guys understand what her question is? She's looking back here that there was a plus sign inside the parentheses, and she's asking where did that go? It's still here. We could rewrite this as 9 is equal to 6 minus x plus a negative 2. When we do that, we end up putting parentheses in so that that negative sign doesn't get lost in all the symbols there. So we tend to leave this invisible. Okay, again, this is something back from elementary school when your teachers were teaching you that like 6 minus 4 equals 2. Well, it really is 6 plus a negative 4 equals 2 but they don't want to confuse little kids, so they just teach them that we take it away. Well, we're not really taking it away. When we're dealing with addition and subtraction, we tend to be moving up and down on a number line. Look up at my number line. If I'm starting at six, and I have a negative four, where are we gonna land? Do you see that? But you can picture, little kids would be so confused by that, it's way easier to give them six chips and say take away four, how, what do you have left, right? But anytime you have a minus sign or subtraction, it really is a negative. And a plus sign, it just means and. If I was gonna read this out loud, I would say positive six and negative four equals positive two. 
How many things did I just say out loud that we typically don't write? Positive six and negative four equals positive two. We like our shortcuts in math, and so leaving out the things that we can leave invisible just makes it a little cleaner. But I could be writing this like this also, right? That's adding all the symbols in there. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Harpy? So that's why when I did this, it's still there. We just left it invisible. Okay. All right. Um, I think with that, it's enough for practicing today. The section we're in in our book is kind of long. There's five examples. We did one yesterday. We've done two today. We'll do two tomorrow and be done with it. So let me give you guys some practice problems from just this, and we will start with Faith's problem she wanted me to do before because she tried it, and now she probably knows what to do, right? Okay, so we're on page 96 still, and today I want you guys to do 7 through 18, and then 30 through 41. It's a lot more. Can we use the same page? You can use the same paper. This is still 2 3. Try not to tear them out of your spiral notebooks because we will need all these pages. And we will correct these problems tomorrow. So. Use your time well, but if there's anything in this, I'm going to go put this video on YouTube and you can go rewatch, okay? Or check with me.